Farmers in the town of Sant Anna de Lokstok are considering this very question. They've been meeting to discuss water management and to experiment with drip irrigation on a test garden. Neat rows of tiny hoses water the corn, beans, peas, cantaloupe, wheat, and squash. The hoses only deliver a half hour of dripping water a few times a week, but many of the farmers are impressed by the results, including Valentin Carrillo Hernandez, one of the town elders. I see the sprouts that my son planted, and they are growing with the drops that fall for a few minutes. And this little water maintains the plants, so they should produce. The Santa Ana farmers work with hydrological engineers from the Mexican non-governmental organization called Alternativas. This group has also assisted Don Valentin and his family with another stewardship project, redesigning a water retention pond for irrigating their fields. The Tehuacan Valley is full of determined and ingenious efforts to coax and conjure water. There are wells which probe ever deeper. There is a history of dams as far back as the start of the Roman Empire. The countryside hosts a panoply of pipes. Some of these channel the burst of life pouring forth from the legendary mineral springs, where families still come to wash away the dust and sweat of their days. There are those, like Rosalino Carrasco Luna from Atacoxco, who divine for water, quite successfully, he says, with nothing more than a stone suspended on a string. It's getting to the water, he adds, that's hard. And then there are those who tease water from the very stone itself. Pedro Hernandez Martinez and Armando Castillo Osorio tend the narrow tunnels that burrow hundreds of meters into the hills of San Pedro Tetitlan. The two are volunteers for a program called Water Forever, which maintains a network of horizontal drip wells running underground. These galerias filtrantes were introduced by the Spaniards in the colonial era. The long underground tunnels are designed to reach upper elevations of groundwater. When the water drips into the tunnels, it flows down and out to the surface at a lower place in the valley. Instead of waiting for the groundwater to seep into a well where it must be pumped out, the galerias catch the water higher up in the process and let gravity deliver it. It is an ancient method, but a steady one. And generations of water seekers have dug hundreds of galerias, working with the barest of tools in claustrophobic spaces which seem to squeeze men as calmly as water. Our grandfathers built this galeria. First, they carved it out from the bottom. Then, after it was all carved out from below, they strained from the top of the entrance to about 60 or 70 meters. From there, they continued to carve out the wells, and from there, they carved out the tunnels. They began this process around 50 to 60 years ago. This helped them form a society here. Don Pedro is president of the local water council. The society his grandfather sculpted has dwindled now, he says, to just a little village. The forces that have diminished their water are not unlike those that are draining away the next generation, the bedrock of their culture. Who will follow Don Pedro's footsteps and bear the heritage of fathers and sons, hewn into the heart of home? <laughs>